here, you guys, so I'm going to try to go as quickly as possible uh, and, and, and get my story out. First of all, by show of hands, because I can see you, how many of you know who I am or have a good context for my background? Raise your hand. All right, that hurts. <laughs> I think that's who I got, but uh, obviously I'll give you a little bit of background in this short period of time. Before I get into anything, uh, word on the street is you have a fairly substantial match tomorrow, and I want to wish you all well. Uh, you know, big match. I'm a big football fan, both the way you call football, American football, and we have big matches on Sundays as well. So I know how you're feeling. Good luck. I hope you guys dominate tomorrow. Um, so I'm a... You know, I'm a Russian immigrant. I was born in Belarus in the former Soviet Union. I came to America when I was three years old um, in 1978. My family was very much an immigrant family. We had very little. We lived in a studio apartment with eight family members. My dad got a job as a stock boy in a liquor store to try to make it. So I come from very humble beginnings. Um, I was always an entrepreneur. When my dad eventually worked so hard that he became the manager of the liquor store in New Jersey, we moved to New Jersey from New York, and that's where my career started. I sold lemonade when I was five. I had all my friends sell lemonade. I basically had a lemonade stand franchise. I thought it was the McDonald's of lemonade. Uh, I used to drive around and pay my big wheels little bicycle and pick up my cash at the end of the day of lemonade like I was a mobster or something. So I was always very, very entrepreneurial. I then eventually started a very big baseball card business. In the US in the late uh, in the late eighties, early nineties, baseball cards were a huge phenomenon. And I was making two to three thousand dollars a weekend selling baseball cards in the malls of New Jersey. And uh, did it very successfully and made tens of thousands of dollars as a young kid. And so always kind of had it, right? Had that um, entrepreneurial spirit. But what really kind of changed for me was when I was 14, my dad dragged me into the liquor store. Um, I hated, I went in kicking and screaming. Um, I, uh, I hated selling liquor and beer. I wasn't your average teenager. Uh, but I fell in love with wine around the time I was 16 or 17, and I got into it. What I want to talk to you about in my last 15 minutes is what's happening right now that's different than what happened to me and why it's so special. I recognize that the U.S. is a different marketplace than where you're living right now. I just came back late last night, two nights ago, excuse me, from Colombia, the country. Very different situation. Every country has its different kind of dynamics. Every place in the world has its different dynamics. But what hasn't changed? And what is most important is I just want everybody in this audience, I want the 30 of you, 40 of you right now, to think for 30 seconds, and I, I'm serious because here's what I want to say. Every single person in the world is grossly underestimating the internet. Forget about Facebook or Twitter or Tumblr or Pinterest or Instagram or Skype or any of these things. We are grossly underestimating the internet. Here's what I mean. It is now 10 or 6 a.m. in the morning here in New York. Uh, I'm sure it's probably five or six hours ahead for you guys. I am talking to you from New York right now on a product that I opened my laptop computer, hit a button, and I'm talking with you thousands of miles away. And it costs zero dollars and zero cents. And, and I'm really thrilled that the guy on the second on the left side of the audience, in the second row, is shaking his head in the white shirt because he's making me very happy because I can't hear shit. But I know that this is a very substantial situation, right? We have to understand that we're living through very special times. And here's what excites me as well. Looking in the crowd, and this is with all due respect, we don't have 16-year-olds in the crowd, right? You've been professionals, you've lived your lives. Everybody in this room, including myself, we all lived in the world prior to the internet, right? Show your hands if you remember the world before the internet. Raise them, I wanna see it. Exactly, right? So, we're all big boys and girls. We know what it used to look like. And to me, coming from humble beginnings, coming from zero dollars, growing up in a very small business and then growing it, took my family business from a three to a $60 million business, took myself from somebody that nobody knew on Twitter, zero followers, to a million followers, because I engaged, I hustled, and most of all, I innovated. I used YouTube in 2006 when nobody else did. I used Twitter in 2007 when nobody else did. I used Tumblr in 2009 when nobody else did. And so what I tell you, my friends in this room, is please, please understand how remarkable these times are, no matter where you are situated by location, 
every day, you have the ability to interact, engage, and scale whatever story. And this is something I want everybody to understand. Everybody in this room really needs to figure out, no matter what business they're in or whatever they're trying to accomplish, who they work for, if they work for themselves or somebody else, all of our jobs is to be a storyteller, right? Notice how I started this keynote by making sure you knew where I came from because that gives you context, right? It gives you understanding that I hustle and grind, that I have dirt under these fingernails, and that that's what I care about, and that's how I think about it. So when it came time to use Twitter, for example, my friends, it was easy. It was unbelievable to me that I could do that sitting in my bed, just like I'm sitting now. The fact that I just sat in my bed for five, six, seven hours a day answering people's question about my expertise, my story, which was wine, and giving them value, that's the thing I think everybody needs to think about. The other thing I want everybody in this room to think about is that you're a media company. Everybody in the world now is a media company. Now, you may be introverted, and you may not want to do the kind of things I'm doing right now and be on video and engage, and that's fine, but whether you write, because plenty of people can write a hell of a lot better than me, whether you can do video, whether you do audio, whether you draw, whether it's through music. In my opinion, today's world is predicated on content, and if you are not producing content or engaging with content, you're not gonna have an opportunity to find the exposure or awareness for what you're trying to accomplish that you're gonna need to be successful. How many people in this room are on Facebook? Raise your hand. Very nice. Who's not? Raise your hand if you're not on Facebook. Very nice. Let's clap it up for that person in the back room to hold that. Very nice. When this conference is over, your horse is going to take you home. Just kidding. Just kidding. Um, <clears throat> Facebook. Billion people on it. If you do not have a Facebook fan page for what you do and telling the world about what you're doing, then you're not really relevant in today's business society. All of our eyes. Outside of live sports, tomorrow you'll be watching, but outside of live sports, more and more every day, we're not watching television, and if we are, we're watching it when we want to watch it, right? DVR, TiVo, Netflix on demand. So telling your story through a television commercial is getting harder, right? None of you are looking to run home after this conference and go to your mailbox and carefully go through your direct mail to see what people want to sell you, right? Nobody's doing that. And more and more every day, people are looking at phones and spending four or five hours a day doing this. We need to figure out how to tell our stories on the platforms that we're actually spending our eyes and ears on and not places where we used to. Just listing things in the yellow pages or banner ads on a website or some forum from 10 years ago, it's just not gonna work. There's an evolution going on in the world right now and what I implore you to think about is how do you set up yourself for victory in that environment? Uh, the other thing that I'm very passionate about is predicated based on the book that I wrote a couple years ago called The Thank You Economy. Very honestly, no matter what you do in this world, I actually think that living in a small town or a smaller marketplace, which is what you guys are fortunate, not unfortunate, fortunate to be able to do, has actually given you guys the skill and the context of where the world's going. Let me explain. I actually think that the far majority of businesses and entrepreneurs that are gonna be successful in the future are gonna look a hell of a lot more like our grandparents than like we do. Meaning, in their day, understanding what the customer wanted, knowing everything about the customer. When you walked into the butcher shop 30, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, he started cutting your roast beef the second you walked in because he knew you, he had context for you. I think the biggest thing that we need to think about is how to bring value through actually caring about the end consumer. One of the things that I'm very proud of is that I answer my email, that while I'm gonna give this talk, when I'm done, if any of you go on Twitter and hit up Gary B E E and say thanks for Skyping in, I'm gonna jump in and say thanks for having me. I believe that the effort that is required to be successful going forward is exponentially higher than it used to be because we are all now connected. How many of you in this room have reconnected with somebody because of Facebook that prior to when you signed up on Facebook, you had not talked to in over five years? Raise your hand. 10, raise your hand. 10 years, somebody that you hadn't talked to in over 10 years, but when you jumped on Facebook, you reconnected. Raise your hand, I wanna see how many people. Half this room is now in contact with somebody that they weren't, that they lost contact with for over 10 years because of technology. Now, 
There's something else that all of us know, which is what we say on Facebook and Twitter is a bunch of rubbish, right? I mean, we share the dumbest shit, right? I'm having a soda, I'm walking my dog, I'm eating a pizza, this, that, and the other thing. All these silly things, right? Well, what's very important to understand is amongst us sharing pictures of our dog or saying goal or drinking a beer or whatever it may be, amongst that, we are saying things like having this Guinness and it's delicious or went to this restaurant and I loved it or had this amazing experience at this place, exclamation point. We have all agreed that technology has changed the way we read books. How many people here now read the books? Instead of reading on a book, they read on a Kindle or an iPad. Raise your hand. More than half of you. More than half of you have changed that habit. We also agree that music has changed, right? Back to my small town rules, we now buy music one song at a time, much like our parents did with LPs in the 50s and 40s and things of that nature. So we're going backwards in a lot of ways. What I think we haven't spent enough time talking about is that communication itself has changed. There are grown ass men in this room right now who've texted LOL and OMG in the last 48 hours. I mean, they're changing the way we're talking. It's just the way it is, right? And so I see some of the grown ass men smiling because they know exactly what I'm talking about. And so I think it's really interesting that we haven't completely grasped that the number one thing that all of you listen to is somebody else. You can take an advertisement, you can take an endorsement, but when a friend says to you, this restaurant is good, or this beer is delicious, or this fruit is fantastic, or use this dry cleaners, or this, that, and the other thing, or this guy Gary is really interesting, read his book, or this guy's a great lawyer, check him out, or this guy's making videos about real estate, check him out, or check her out, she's amazing, she's an amazing businesswoman, or this guy's a great cook. Word of mouth, my friends, is the number one way that things sell in our society. They always have been, they always will be. And what social media is, so there's no confusion, what social media is, is the infrastructure and plumbing for word of mouth. All Facebook and Twitter are, all Pinterest and Instagram are, is plumbing infrastructure for us to be able to communicate with each other. However, the economic impact is a billion, trillion, gazillion dollars because that's how we make decisions. And so I implore everybody here to really give a lot of thought. You know, I did a lot of the homework on, on your countryside, on, on where you guys reside, and I think it's really fascinating to me the advantages of coming from a small town or, or, or kind of that real authentic, I mean, let's call it what it is. 99.9% .9 of businesses don't give a shit about their customer, right? They don't care, they just wanna sell stuff. And I think the advantages for me of coming from humble beginnings and, and immigrant roots is that every customer counted. When I worked at my dad's liquor store, if we lost a customer, we cried about it for a month. I remember one time we went to a supermarket and me and my dad saw one of our customers buying a bottle of vodka in the supermarket and we looked at each other and we were devastated for a month. That's how much we cared about every, I mean, we, look, we still talk about that dude. 12 years later, that's how much every customer mattered. And I think for me, when I saw the internet come along, I saw that you could push out information and all that's fine. But when I saw Twitter come along, and it gave me the opportunity to engage with people, that if they said Gary V is a bloke and he stinks, that I could jump in and say, hey, what's the problem? And talk to them. That level of caring really matters. And so, Paul, I appreciate you having me today, and I, and I really hope that you know, out of the 30, 40 people, that only one realizes, really, because I don't have big ambitions. I know that when I speak and I talk about this stuff, the stuff I talk about, which is putting out stories and then engaging with them and spending five, six hours a day in this kind of environment is very difficult, and, and a lot of people won't do it. But, Paul, when you invited me, and I'm sure you probably told them the story of how it happened, it was through, through, through hustle, it was through technology, it was through caring. And, and I implore people in the audience to figure out the infrastructure, which sites, which platforms, which mobile devices, which apps, which startups, which Facebook and social networks work best for you to tell the story. Just listen, we're connected on one thing, and we'll leave with this. We're connected on one thing. We all may be very different, and we may all be doing different things, but the one thing I promise you is every person in this room, every person wants to and has to tell the story to the potential customer of what value they bring to the situation. 
Everybody in this room needs to figure out how to tell a story about what they bring to the table to the person that wants to buy the type of things that they offer. And they have to figure out where to tell that story. And that story used to be told on email, and, and used to be told on television, and print, and radio, and it's becoming more and more told on these social networks, see the audience, and the audience distributes the information, not the paid money that you put into it. And I implore all of you to figure out what your story is, what value you bring to the marketplace, and then put the time and effort to actually care about the customer, to tell them that story, and engage with them. That to me is the world. That to me is what's happening, and it's never been cheaper. It's never been cheaper to do this. It used to take money, and now it takes effort. And if I'm sitting in, in this audience, that to me is the exciting part, because it's true capitalism, no matter where you live, or what your economic infrastructure is, the ability of the internet to prop you up and give people exposure to you and what you do is endless. Completely opportunistic based on the talent that you've been gifted with and the work that you put in. And to me that tastes pretty good. And so I wish you well. I, I, I thank you so much for having me. I hope one person digs a little deeper into what I'm talking about. Feel free to engage with me, facebook.com slash Gary if you have any deeper questions. And most of all, far more important than anything I've said for the 20 minutes, I hope you guys kick some ass tomorrow. <laughs>